So yeah, welcome along. Uh, my name is Ski Oakenfall and I'm the Head of Education and Curriculum at Point Blank Music School. Has anyone heard of Point Blank Music School? Fantastic, okay, well welcome along. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do a deconstruction. Essentially the idea is uh, we take apart a track, kind of analyze the key elements, work out the key signature, what are the chords, and kind of use that as a more fun, engaging way to teach these disciplines. And today I'm gonna be doing this track, which is uh, Lil Louis' French Kiss. It's a legendary track, uh, it's fantastic. So a few fun facts, it was released way back in 1989, still a firm club favourite, produced and written by American DJ and record producer Lil Louie, with also a writing credit by Carlana Johnson. Not sure if she's the one that did the vocals on it. Um, came out on FFRR, Polygram, and it's from his album, From the Mind of Lil Louie. Style-wise, kind of house, techno. Yeah, there's a few production features of the track. One of the classic things is it actually slows down and speeds up, so this was quite a revolutionary thing uh, at the time. It also uses uh, a keyboard called the Yamaha DX100, the younger sibling of the DX7, and a very famous sound, which is the solid bass preset. Rather than kind of recreating the famous female vocal, I'm gonna be mixing in an acapella, and it's gonna be this classic track, uh, the source featuring Candy Statton, You Got The Love. So, um, does anyone recognize this digital audio workstation? Yes, okay, so this is Ableton Live. This is one of the DAWs that we teach at Point Blank Music School alongside Logic and also Pro Tools. What I've done with this is that I've uh, created a kind of template with the key sounds uh, that are gonna be used in this track. There are two views in Ableton Live. This is the session view, and then we have the arrange view. The session view uh, is built on these little cells or clips, and it allows us to build up loops. And then what we can do is we can actually record those, play them live using push, or we can trigger them from the actual software, and then we can actually kind of uh, jam in the arrangement live. So that's what we're gonna hopefully do by the end of this session. Okay, so the first part I'm gonna record in is this DX100 sound, and I've actually got the DX7 here. This is the Archuria DX7. So this is the sound, and after a bit of research, I found that this was the sound that they used. So actually, it's a bass sound. It was used on a lot of tracks, a lot of famous cool tracks. Also, it was used on Wigfield's Saturday Night. So this is the riff. At this point, uh, it's an opportunity to talk about a little bit of music theory. As I mentioned before, one of the things that uh, we do with these deconstructions is look for the key signature. And the key signature is going to dictate the notes that are being played in this track. And this particular track uh, is in F minor. So if I play the notes of F minor, they're this. So F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, and F. And what's great about push is that it's got a scale function, so I can actually set the scale as F minor, which means that Whatever notes I play, they're gonna be the notes of F minor. So I could either play it on this, or I can play it on here. So let's record our first clip in, and this is gonna go into this clip here. And it's gonna be one bar long, so uh, I'm gonna press this button down here and I can actually set one bar. I'm gonna put the metronome on. What's the tempo? We're at 124 BPM. Okay, so that's the riff, let's record it in. And you can see that it's just captured that part for me, and you can see the actual parts in there. Now I'm gonna take the metronome off, because that gets a bit annoying after a while. Now I've actually played that, I think, even if I say, say so myself, quite in time. <laughs> But just to make sure it's totally techno and locked in, I'm gonna press the quantize button and that's gonna make it even more in time. Okay, next sound is gonna be the drums. So we've got an 808, a TR-808, extremely important drum machine made by Roland. And this is the Ableton version of the TR-808. 
a lot of classic sounds in there. And I'm going to record in the kick drum. So I'm going to make this a two bar loop. Uh, and this time I'm going to put a function called record, record quantize on, which means that I don't have to quantize it afterwards. Anything I play is going to put it in time for me into 16th. So let's record this in. Okay, so starting to kind of build up the track. Hopefully you can recognize it. Um, so we're going to put some other sounds in now. And this, which is a closed hi-hat. What this is using is something called choke groups, which means that if I play the open hi-hat, you can hear it's got a longer decay. But as soon as I play the short hi-hat, the closed hi-hat, it cuts it off. So I'm going to use the step sequencer here to actually play in the open hi-hat first. And then you'll see how that function of the choke group really kind of adds to the groove of the track. So let's put in the open hi-hats first. So we've got the open hi-hats. Now I'm going to go to the closed hi-hat and program that in. So it's providing a really nice groove. Great. OK, so we've got the kind of the bare bones of the track now. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to start building up, thinking about the actual arrangement of the track. So these horizontal lines here are called scenes. What we can do using either push or on here is trigger these scenes from the left hand side. So we can actually build up a combination of clips to build up our arrangement. On push, I'm going to go over to the session view and I'm going to duplicate these clips down to the different scenes. So there's a button for that and it's called duplicate. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I've duplicated it nine times, which means I've got 10 clips. And I can scroll down on push here. And if I play the last one here, they're all the same. But actually, I want something different to happen in this clip here. So I'm going to delete it. So I've just got, just got the drums on its own. Go back to this solid bass sound. And I'm going to go down a semitone. Sorry, a tone. So let's go back to fix length one bar and record that in. So now I can switch between the two. Right, so now we're going to start um, doing a little bit more programming. The next sound I'm going to put in um, is a snare sound, and this is coming from a drum machine called the TR-707. It was more of a sample-based drum machine. TR-808 is more analog. This is um, more sample-based. So with this, I'm going to put in a snare drum. Let's go to fixed length one bar. That's great. And the part for this is, goes like this. Let's record it in. I'm going to add a tambourine to that as well. Oops. So you can see that clip is just happening in the third scene down. So great. So we've got that in. Uh, then we're going to record in the just a kind of very simple snare and clap on the two and the four. going into scene six, go back over to session view, and I'm going to duplicate that down to the other scenes. OK, so we've got the snare and the tambourine in. The next sound is from the sibling of the TR-707, which is the TR-727. Now, this was the kind of percussion sounds. Um, similarly, kind of sample bass. We've got some nice congas. We've got this nice shaker. So we're going to use this shaker here. and. I'm going to set, for this, I'm going to set the length as two beats. And this is going to go on the fourth scene here. So just playing 16th notes. 
Now push, Ableton push has got a great feature called the repeat button, which means that rather than having to play it like that, I can just hold down the pad and it will just play it for me. So it makes it very easy. So let's record it in. Now I'm going to solo that now, that part. And in order to give it a little bit more feel, I'm going to lower the velocity of every other shaker um, hit. So uh, we can just, let's just go here. What I can do is just hold this, this kind of step down here and just lower the velocity. And when I play it in a minute, you'll hear the kind of added groove that that creates. Okay. So I'm going to take the repeat off. There's one more sound I want to add, which is just this a go-go bell on the start of the bar. Okay, so we're building up the parts. I'm now going to duplicate that part down. Okay, let's go back up to the first scene. And I'm going to go back to uh, a melodic sound now, and I'm going to put in a string sound. I'm using one of my favorite plugins, it's the Tal Uno LX, and I'm going to play this top note. Remember the track's in F minor, and when you just play one note like that, that's called a pedal. So I'm going to play it on here, I could play it on there, it doesn't really matter. Um, but let's record it in, and let's do the fixed length, let's make that one bar, and let's record it in. Great, so it doesn't get a lot of love, this part, because it only happens in the first scene and in the last scene. Duplicate it down to the last scene, and then we can trigger it. And then remember the last scene is where we went down a tone. Okay, so we've got two more parts uh, to record in. Um, the next part is a little stab sound, a kind of synth stab sound. And this is gonna come in scene five. This is an, uh, an Ableton Live uh, sound. It's using the analog device. And remember, that's the scale of F minor. We're going to play C, E flat, and F. And I'm actually using a chord device to double up this sound. That's on its own. And the chord device is going to play an octave down. So that's going to be the part, and let's record it in. We've got a fixed length of one bar again. I'll do it on the keyboard this time. Okay, so let's put this part in. Okay, just duplicate that down to these scenes, but not the last scene, because otherwise it would clash. Okay, last sound. The last sound is an arpeggio sound. So again, we're still in F minor. That's one part, and then there's a slight variation where it goes. Okay, so let's just make this two beats, um, and let's record in the first part, which is. Okay. Great, and let's duplicate that down. And then for this second to last scene, let's just do the variation on that. Now what I've done with this sound is, the, is again, it's the Tal Uno LX. Let's just bring that up. And I've actually mapped the filter cutoff. There we go. So it means that I can actually vary that and play that in live when I'm playing the whole arrangement.
Okay, so that's the bare bones of the track. Now, what is fantastic about Ableton Live uh, is it's very easy to change the tempo. Now, there aren't any, any kind of samples or loops in here, so that makes it even easier. But I can do that from push and kind of recreate what actually happens in the track. So. Going down. And then speed it right back up again. So as I mentioned earlier, rather than recreating the original female groaning sound, um, I've decided to use a different vocal for this. And I'm going to play it to you now. So this is the uh, Candy Staten track. And let's just uh, play it now so you can hear what it sounds like. Sometimes I feel like throwing my hands up in the air. I know I can count on you. Sometimes I feel like saying, Lord, I just don't care. Now to prepare for this, I did a little bit of work, I put it in time and I tuned it up and uh, so it was in F minor um, and what this is going to allow me to do is kind of play along with, uh, with this in session view here on push, the different sections and record it into the arrange view here so that I can edit it afterwards, just basically play along with this vocal. So it's a really amazing feature of Ableton Live where you can actually have the arrange view and the session view working together. However, in order to do that, there's one little trick. On, on here, the actual track, the a cappella track, we've got these stop buttons. Um, and if I played it and then triggered that scene, it would basically hit stop and take over uh, the track so it wouldn't play. So what I have to do is I just have to highlight those clips, um, right click and then remove stop button, and then that will, basically that won't happen. So let's get into uh, some recording. Um, before I do that, actually, there's another effect that I've got, which is... So that's some reverb. Uh, and that's sending to my favorite reverb plugin, the EMT140. This is a Universal Audio plugin. So I can have a play with that. Okay, so here we go. Here's um, the mashup um, of Candy Staten with Lil Louie. Uh, here we go. So let's record it.
There we go. So. <laughs>